an academic discipline is a field of study that has a distinct and specialized subject matter and that places of learning and knowledge production, in this case universities, are organized into academic disciplines. What we want to do in this lecture is to look at the status of political science as an academic discipline, as a social science discipline, and consider its connections with the other social sciences. Earlier on, I said to you that you would have found that political science is located in the Faculty of Social Sciences at the University of Ibarra. That tells you that there is something that political science has in common with the other courses or academic disciplines in the Faculty of Social Sciences. Now, if you read the lecture notes of the very first class, you know, which was asking about the nature of politics, you would have come across a number of things. The first you would have found is that politics is ubiquitous, meaning that politics exists everywhere. Politics is like the air that we breathe. The ubiquity of politics simply comes from the fact that it is an unavoidable, unavoidable element in all human relations. When two or more people come together, the likelihood that they may not agree is very high. And when people don't agree, that is the beginning of politics. When they do agree, that is also politics. Politics is ubiquitous because there is no place that is insulated from, from politics, whether it's the family or it's the classroom or even this platform that we are on. You can see how difficult it is to manage all of us. Uh, some people are compliant, others are not. Uh, uh, some are ignorant, many of us just don't know. Uh, so this diversity of interests and diversity of actions would mean that there's politics, even the, the virtual class, the Zoom class that we have in the family, everywhere. Now, that's the first thing. The second thing, of course, is that um, politics is of concern to everyone, precisely for the reason that if we are not able to reconcile our differences and manage them properly, then organized and uh, orderly life cannot go on. So over the years, in fact, since the history of human society, uh, everyone has been interested in politics. In our last class, we also talked about steering problems of politics. We talked about justice, we talked about power, we talked about equality and these kinds of issues, freedom and so on. So, Concern with politics is as old as the beginnings of organized human society. And that means that we may say the study of politics or interest in studying politics is as old as humankind. If we want to be too arrogant, we would say that politics has been studied since the beginning of human society. But perhaps Aristotle was right in saying that politics may be regarded as master science. Okay. The discipline of political science is, however, very young. In other words, the interest in studying politics and the study of politics itself is very old. Uh, it's, 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 it's ancient, dates back to the Greeks and all organized societies. But the discipline of political science, which specializes in the systematic study of politics, is new, is relatively young. It is still growing and it is still developing. 
the discipline of political science did not crystallize until the close of the 19th century. So political science actually became a distinct discipline in the 20th century. Now, this raises a question, which would be, if we say politics has been studied all along, how was it studied? Politics was studied by political philosophers who were mostly armchair theorists who were concerned with the basic issues that we described as the steering problems of politics in our societies. Um, so you would find those philosophical writings that were mostly prescriptive. Uh, if you read Plato's Republic, for instance, the, the whole question was how can we ensure a just and well ordered society? Those were the kinds of concerns uh, that engaged the attention of political philosophy. So politics was studied by political philosophers. Later, politics was studied by historians. Politics was studied by law um, scholars. And so politics has always been there. Uh, it was studied as part of history, as part of philosophy, and as part of law. The turning point came when there was a growing consciousness on the need to have a distinct discipline that would focus specifically on analyzing politics and researching it and teaching it. That's how political science became a distinct discipline. As we say, all of this happened beginning from the late 19th century when the American Political Science Association was founded in 1899 and departments of political science started to gain shape. Now, the fact that political science is a young discipline is reflected in many of its realities. The first is that the name political science is not the only name by which the discipline is known. Again, you might say that this multiplicity of identity is a function of the mixed foundations that the discipline had uh, from history, from philosophy, from law. So today, we call our political science. The others call it political studies. Some call it politics. Some call it government. Some call it political science and public administration. Some call it political science and international relations. Now, this is a multiplicity of identity, uh, which means that there is still some, if you like, um, contestation over how best to name this academic discipline. Uh, however, when we say political science, there is general understanding that most people have come to accept uh, that perhaps it is best to call it political science. Okay, now, when political science emerged, there were questions about its autonomy, its status, and people were saying, is political science truly an academic discipline? In the lecture notes that I gave to you yesterday, we had political scientists who say the best way to gauge the autonomy and status of political science is to relate it to the ingredients of a discipline, the ingredients of a discipline. 
and they go ahead to list about eight ingredients, which I'm sure you are familiar with by now. One of them is that a discipline should have a distinct subject matter. 